Ugh. What a week three that was, huh? <laughs> I mean, it was just, it had everything. First off, let's start with the obvious. 66 yards. Can you believe it? Well, part of, part of it's believable. The fact that Justin Tucker made it, that's believable. Because I think pretty much everybody figured if anybody's going to break that field goal record, it's going to be him. Because I think he's made about more 50 plus yarders than anybody. But, um, yeah, so Justin Tucker nailed it 60. Well, he nailed it, but he needed some help from the crossbar. Doink! Went over. And there it went. So history was made, and it was more stunning Harper. Yet another crazy loss in Detroit for the Lions. Mm -mm -mm. Um, <laughs> and the crazy thing. The long-standing record, um, the, the long-standing record, set by the recently late Tom Dempsey. He passed away last year. Um, six, the sixty-three yards that was that was also made in Detroit, and that also resulted in a nineteen seventeen final. Amazing! It's like fate in Detroit. They're destined to have these embarrassing, shocking, one in a million type losses. This this happens to him even more so than the Browns, of course. Kudos to the Browns for beating the Bears. Um, yeah, uh, and of course, um, Mason Crosby made a field goal, winning field goal of his own. Now, it was 51, it wasn't 66, but it's all the same. That was, a, that, no surprise, was a good game. I mean, every time the, in my lifetime, any time the Packers and the Boy Niners get together, it's a slobber knocker. There's going to be, it's going to be a game of the week. It always is. Only difference is the names have changed, but it's always just amazing. But we won, and when that, I'll be honest, when that field goal was made, I nearly came close to crying, and here's why. I've said this many times. Um, Rogers, he has problems in Santa Clara. I call Santa Clara Rogers kryptonite, and because um, he can't seem, that's the one place where he just can't seem to function but um he 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 caught he was he he was collected he got the job done especially in that final drive 37 seconds no timeouts no problem um can't leave time on the clock for him <laughs> no you can't uh but uh he got it done and we got a much much important win on the road against an, uh, an, an NFC heavyweight. So I think everything's in the past, and now we're back to back, pretty much back to normal regarding the Packers after three weeks. And I was I was very happy with the defense. The defense defense has been played. The Packers defense has been played very well this season. Even with that, even even that bad game, the defense was fine. Only 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 way time the defense gave up was the only reason why the defense kind of gave up was because the whole team did. I can't put that on the defense, but uh. Yeah, the Packers defense has been playing pretty well. Just, just keep it up. And um, so, uh, what else happened? Ah, yes, the slow death of the Steelers. Oof. Oh boy. I don't know what's happening though. Apparently, Bengals receiver Tyler Boyd know, knows. Uh, he said in so many words that the team quit. They just quit on him. And I can't help but agree with him. I really can't help but agree with him. And, um... It, it was just awful. The Steelers are fading. I mean, they're one and two. It's early, but... If this was... If this was... What? If this was as late as about... Five... I would say five years ago. That's what they that's the year they made to the AFC championship. If this was as late as five years ago, I'd say, eh, there's nothing to worry about. They'll be fine. They've got the weapons, they got Big Ben, Tomlin's Tomlin's over, over there coaching, he's a mastermind. Pittsburgh, they'll be back. They'll be just fine. But that was five years ago, and the AFC wasn't as deep as it is now. The AFC is wide open, and Pittsburgh is aging and falling apart at the wrong time. This team could be. I'm not saying they are, 
but they could be screwed. Um, so who knows what? Who knows what the rest of the season? I think. Here's what I think. I think the next. I'm gonna say three, maybe four weeks will determine what will determine the fate of the Steelers if they actually have a shot at the playoffs, let alone the division. This is exactly why I picked Cleveland to win that division. Because I feared this would happen. I really did. Uh, I, I kind of hoped I'd be wrong about Pittsburgh fading, but they're fading. It, it's a horrible thing to see. Um, what wasn't a horrible thing to see was the afternoon clash between the Rams and and the Buccaneers. That, that was a great game, as I expected, because it was in Sophie Stadium. Uh, Brady's never Brady's never played in L.A. before. And he got that chance. And the Rams have been out to a good start, and it continued. They took down the champs. They were the last. They were the last NFC team to beat um, to beat uh, uh, um, the, the Bucks. Yeah, back when Jared Goff was a the quarterback, they went into Brady's place and beat him. Now Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford has to be Stafford has to be happy as hell that he's out of Detroit. He has to be. I mean, he is just... Well, for one, he's in L.A. His buddy, Clayton Kershaw, plays for the Dodgers, so he's right there with his buddy. And he's on a good team that could go far. They're 3-0. and You know who else is 3-0? The Raiders. Woo! The Raiders are 3-0. and I can't believe this. I, didn't, I honestly didn't think I'd be right about the Raiders doing anything. I picked them to go to the playoffs. I didn't pick them to win the division. Because I, I figured Kansas City would just dominate even though it's kind of wide open but the Raiders could win the AFC West I know it's early but they could win the AFC West and I and I mentioned the Chiefs what's going on this was supposed to be Mahomes bounce back game after that close loss in Baltimore but they fell apart they committed four turnovers Mahomes threw two picks one, the first one wasn't his fault that's a ball that should have been caught but he threw two picks um Tyreek Hill lost a fumble, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire lost a fumble for the second straight game. They, th these are not the Chiefs I know. These are not the Chiefs anybody knows. They are one and two. That's right. We are in we are in an NFL right now where the Chargers, the um, let's say the Chargers, the uh, the the Bengals, and the Panthers all have better records than the Chiefs, the Seahawks, and the Steelers. I mean, who had that coming? Oh, I forgot about the Broncos. They have a better record. They're undefeated. Who had this coming? It's 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 a year of openness and surprise developments. It's been insane. It's been very insane. And of course, Dallas. Well, Dallas. This isn't a surprise to me because Dallas. I had Dallas win the division. I think Dallas is the class of the NFC East. Though it kind of helps that the other three teams kind of suck. And that includes the Giants. I thought the Giants would actually be better than this. I thought the Giants would be that team. Well, they probably wouldn't win the division, but they would try. But they would give the Cowboys a few problems. They are zero and three and playing like hot garbage. And they've lost to teams that I thought they were going to beat. I honestly thought I asked. I had the Giants starting three and zero. They're zero and three, and it doesn't look like there's a there's a there's a way up from out of this. I mean, it's awful. I mean, the extra the extra week, the extra game allows some more margin, a, lo a bit more of a lo larger margin of error, but even so, the way that team is playing, it's just nauseating. So, um, yeah, so, so that's what, that's what went on. That's what went on a week for, oh, um, about the field goal thing. Matt Prater had the record before Tucker. Prater nearly broke the record, broke his own record. He went for a 68-yarder. That missed and ended up being returned all the way 109 yards by Jacksonville, who still lost. Jacksonville has lost 18 straight games. They haven't won a, they haven't won a regular season NFL game since September 13, 2020, week one of last year. That's frightening. And they're one loss away from... Tying two teams, the Raiders of I think it was the '60s, and um, and of course the Lions back around over almost a decade and a half ago, that 19-game losing streak was centered by the 2008 year where they went 0-16. 
became the first ever 0-16 team. But yeah, um, yeah, it's not looking good. And of course, the record is 29 by the Chicago Cardinals back in the 40s. But the but since the merger, since the 1970 merger, the longest losing streak is the infamous slide that started um, Tampa that started the Tampa Bay Buccaneers tenure. They lost their first 26 games, including going 0 14 their first year. They were the first winless team, and um, and uh, they start, they lost the first 26 straight games. So that's the, the longest since the merger, 1970. So um, will they make will they make history? Who knows? They just might. That's a terrible team. I feel sorry for Trevor Lawrence. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Because uh, number one pick, this great star at the, at the University of Clemson. Now here he is stuck on a god awful team. Oh boy! And that god awful team will kick off week uh, will kick off week four this Thursday. The Jaguars are in Cincinnati playing the possibly good Bengals. <laughs> yeah, Bengals two and one, and uh, could definitely improve to three and one. That's definitely going to happen. Uh, as for Sunday's action, as we enter the month of of October, uh, the Chiefs try to bounce back again. They are they they are in Philly facing the Eagles. Um, the Saints host the Giants. That's that's. That's some of the games in the early window. Um, in the later window, we have a couple of NF two NFC West battles. Niners host the Hawks. That's always good when those two get together. Uh, and, the, and the undefeated Rams host the undefeated Cardinals. Ooh, who had that? The Cardinals undefeated. Not you know. This is these are saying Cardinals who sputtered in late December and that Sunday in January and missed the playoffs entirely. Let the Bears make it past them. <laughs> um. And of course, also in the late window, what I call a clash of the titans. Steelers, Packers, in Lambeau. I myself am definitely going to drink that in because it's Rodgers versus Big Ben. And that could be the last time we see those two uh, clash. Two two great quarterbacks. Big fan of both of them. Uh, of course, the Sunday night game. Oh, boy. Sunday night game. The Patriots host the Buccaneers, which means Tom Brady is coming home. Oh. <laughs> That's been promoted this whole week and is going to continue to be promoted. I myself find this funny because I love it. It's like, I love it. It's it, it's like that uh, uh, bad relationship that ex, that 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 person who thinks they're over their ex when they're really not. <laughs> and uh, Monday Night Football is a very interesting AFC West battle: uh, Raiders and Chargers. Raiders three zero, Chargers two one. The games at Sophie Stadium in LA. Yeah, Sophie Stadium hosting two games this week because. Uh, the Rams and Chargers play on different days. The Rams are playing that Sunday, and the Chargers are playing that Monday, both at Sophie Stadium. So they're going to be rocking in Week 4. So that's coming up in Week 4. That's my recap of Week 3. What a Week 3 it was. Um, if you like this video, click the like button. Click subscribe if you want more of this. Uh, my story on Vocal about Week 3 of this season, it will be in the description below. And I'll be back on YouTube to talk about the end of the baseball season and kind of preview the playoffs. And, of course, I will review week four next week. So stay tuned.